Thank you for joining us for another episode of This or That. Today, we are gonna discuss AC versus DC pumps to help you make the right decision for your setup. So let's start with the differences. Yeah, so the, the first thing we'll start with is what is AC versus what is DC. So mm -hmm. AC stands for alternating current. DC means direct current, right? So, and they're, they're actually a little bit hard. I guess they're a little confusing in the way they work. But AC, when you plug something that has AC or alternating current in, the current that is hitting that piece of equipment is, you know, there may be a transformer inside of it, but that's what you're gonna get. So in the case of an AC pump, you plug that pump into the wall, it's going to run at one speed, or it's going to at least attempt to, depending on if it's dirty or whatever, but it's going to run at one speed. A certain amount of power is delivered to that, and it's running. DC pump or direct current pump, it will only run as fast as the amount of current that's being delivered to it, right? So the more current or the more electricity is pumped through that device, the faster it's gonna go, right? And so that's really great if we wanna dial things down. So a lot of like really small electronic appliances will we use a direct current because it doesn't require much power. And so direct current pumps are, are nice because you can actually adjust the amount of power going to that pump and that's gonna change how much water output you've got, right? So in the past, direct current pumps weren't used a lot in aquariums, just because, or they were, but a lot of people chose um, AC pumps over DC pumps because the AC pumps were just more reliable, more heavy duty, they withheld head pressure, they, mm -hmm. you know, they pushed water a lot farther, they were much more powerful than your typical DC pumps. But we've come a long way since then. Yeah, good point. So let's, let's keep talking about AC then. We'll start with AC pumps. Yeah. Um, for me, biggest differentiator is going to be cost. If I'm just looking for mm. something that's going to work, you know, I've sized it correctly, I don't plan on adding anything, AC is the way I'm going. Yeah, AC is great. Uh, if, if, you're, you know, if you've got a long way to go, you've got maybe say your, your sump or your equipment's in the basement, for instance, and sure. your tank's in the, in the first level of your home, or if you're, you're going to go for something like a closed loop system for flow, you know, an AC pump is great because it's going to put out that amount of power that you need. It's going to be more reliable, typically at those higher head pressures and those more demanding, um, you know, water movement levels. Right? Yep, very good point. So AC in general will handle additional plumbing, head pressure, long distances, like yep. you mentioned, better than a DC. Variant. Yeah, the, the, the problem is what you can run into is overpowering your, your system just a little mm -hmm. bit. So you have to be careful. You have to make sure that you're, you're getting the right pump to accommodate what you're trying to do for it, right? So you can very easily get a pump that's too powerful for your return, and then you've actually got to try to dial it back. You know, maybe it just your, your overflow can't keep up with it, and so what you have to do is put a gate valve or a, a ball valve on that pump. Yep. Because the pump, you can't slow it down, so you've got to slow the movement of water. The, the problem with that is, with an AC pump, is you start to die, you, you know, you, you restrain the water flow mm -hmm. coming out of it, and you're going to put strain on that pump. Not only are you straining the pump, you're also increasing the amount of heat because of that yep. going into your tank, you're pulling more wattage. Yeah, and, yeah, and the, the pump is still going to run. It's still gonna consume as much power. Mm -hmm. It's just not moving as much water. So it's heating up your water unnecessarily, which, you know, again, back in the, uh, you know, 20 years ago or so, that's why a lot of people ran chillers on their aquariums as well, because they had one, metal halide lights, and two, all these big AC pumps that were moving all the water around you had to have some way of cooling that water back off. And now you see chillers aren't as prominent as they used to be. And one of the reasons is because a lot of people have switched to DC pumps. So uh, AC pumps are reliable, they're powerful, uh, but they, they come at a, at a cost, right? Or they come at you know, so a bit of a disadvantage. Um, but again, if you're going for reliability, you know that like say your, your overflow is gonna handle this much, get an AC pump that handles less than that at a, as a max, mm -hmm. and, and you're in good shape. Because yeah, they, they are great, they're really powerful. Um, I used to use a lot of like Iwaki pumps and they were fantastic and yep. they were bulletproof. All right, so now let's move on to DC. I'm gonna start with power heads. This is gonna be 80, 90% of the market yeah. nowadays. So key benefits of DC, as you mentioned earlier, controllability. Yeah, so, you know, and with that, that's where with AC, again, they're strong, they're really nice, but you have to understand and know what you're trying to accomplish, right? You have to know how much your overflow can handle. You have to know how much flow you're gonna put out those DC pumps, it makes it a little bit easier. You know, if you're setting up a new system and you know that you're gonna push, well, proc, let's just say you're gonna push, you know, 1200 gallons an hour, uh, you know, through your system. And that's what you wanna, you know, then you get a DC pump that's anywhere from 1000 to 2000 gallons per hour and you can adjust it to meet the demands of your system. 
So that's the great part about it. You don't have to do a lot of back of the napkin math to make sure that you've got the right pump and that it's gonna produce the head pressure that you need, um, or whatever the case may be, right? You can always just dial it up if you need to, dial it back if you need to, uh, all that kind of stuff. And a great addition to that is just that, uh, especially if you are, if you do have, let's say, a, um, a closed loop. Again, with, a, with the old closed loop or a closed loop like what I used to do for with AC pumps, if I wanted to reduce the flow or stop the flow, I just had to unplug those things. Mm. With DC pumps, I could just dial them down a little bit, which is easier on the pump. It's less strain. Uh, they can just run slow for a while, like put them in feed mode, and you can go from there. Another good point. Feed mode is super nice. Now, super originally, cool. like when we first started converting over to DC pumps many years ago, um, I looked at feed mode as kind of a gimmick, mm -hmm. but reducing the amount of food going down your overflow is huge. Yeah, and well, and like I said, just starting and stopping those AC pumps mm -hmm. can put a lot of strain on them. Uh, it'd be it'd be like going out and cold starting your car and, and driving immediately, right? You want to let that thing warm up a little bit. So DC pumps are nice because they do a slow start, and then they'll then they'll increase their flow rates. Where at AC pump, it's firing away right off the bat. And, uh, I've seen people's aquariums that they fire on their AC pumps and all the plumbing shakes real quick. You know, it's yep. like, and then it clears you know? all the buildup. And then, yeah, every then time. you get this yep. big cloud of stuff mm -hmm. going on. So yeah, there's there's those drawbacks. Um, all all things that are you know you can overcome, but there's still some some drawbacks to them. So so here's another big one. DC pumps are going to allow you to oversize your pump without having to crank it down like an AC pump yeah, exactly. and increase the stress, which will allow you to maybe add like UV mm -hmm. reactors, different things like that. Because if you have a DC pump, maybe I oversize it, I'm running at 25%, and then I'm going to add a UV sterilizer. I can utilize maybe another 25% of that pump yep. to tee off a UV sterilizer or reactor. Right. With a DC pump, if you add another piece of equipment to that at some point down the line or add another line to it, however you want to do it, uh, another a second, even split off your return into two, yeah. um, you know, with an AC, with a DC pump, you can do that very easily as long as you've got one that's overpowered for what you're your current tank is rated for. AC pump, you know, you've got to way overpower that thing from the beginning. You've got to know what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Where a nice thing about DC pump is it's like, eh, I'm not really sure, right? And you can run that and not put strain on the pump, not add extra heat to your tank, not waste a bunch of electricity. You can do that and still have that flexibility in the future. So, I mean, for me, it's a, it's a no-brainer. Like a DC pump is, is the way to go if, uh, if you know, you find one that can handle, say, again, that head pressure. If you're, again, if you're doing a basement sump system or something like that, you may have to go with an AC pump, but. Yep, no, I would totally agree. I think the, the biggest consideration here that we need to think about if we're looking for a pump for our tank is really just comes down to cost. If a DC pump is affordable for your setup, that's probably the way to go mm -hmm. nine out of 10 times. Yeah, and one other thing we haven't touched on yet, which is, is important for a lot of folks, I. I don't care as much because typically for me, my my gear, my tank equipment is either in the in the next room or it is like in the basement like that, right? So I like to have everything in a separate room because I'm a very I'm, I'm a bigger guy. I like to be able to move around at all. I don't like to, everything crammed into one sure, little tiny sure. space. So, um, for you know, for me, one of the nice things about it, the DC pumps uh, is that they're quieter, right? If I was gonna have this in a room where it's, uh, you know a living room and there's you know going to be people present things like that i don't want that constant hum that you get from an ac pump you know uh, you know constantly going right, right. generating all that noise where mm -hmm. a dc pump's typically going to be a lot quieter so it just kind of depends on, on whether that's important to you or not but that is uh, usually the case a dc pump is typically going to be quieter than an ac pump very good point and we also talked about cranking down your ac pump creates excess heat in the tank whereas a dc pump your energy loss is happening at the converter rather True. than within your water. Right, so it's going out into the into the atmosphere around mm -hmm. you. It's going into the room, um, but it's not going into your tank, which exactly. is great. Yep. So these are really the key considerations for choosing the pump for your next tank. Uh, hopefully we've helped you make the right decision. Yep. Thanks everybody. We'll see you next time.